Hello world, Jennifer here. Welcome to the True Self Living YouTube studio. I hope to be able to do interviews and some other stuff in this room and also show a part of myself that I've never showed on YouTube before. Parts of my electronics career. I spent about 25 years in the electronics industry, mostly working in heavy industry working with sensors and things and other machinery that in today's world with electronics and being able to have a sensor to do anything people will stuff a sensor just about anywhere to monitor something so it turned out to be my job to either figure out how to how to put the sensor in or what what to do with it after graduating from technical school in 1991 with my associate's degree in electronics I moved on to quite a career in a couple of different companies doing a variety of things from small consumer products to large commercial equipment to where I could work on all of the sensors. I worked for one company doing their, their computer and network equipment upgrades and other associated equipment. Since the weather here in northern Georgia has become so hot here in late August, I've decided to move in and get back into the world of electronics. Because I do enjoy it. I miss it a bit. So I thought I would talk about here quickly a little bit of what I have done in the last six, eight months with electronics and other interesting things and some ideas I have. I hope you do find this interesting. It, to some, the world of electro electricity and electronics may be a little boring, but I do find it interesting and helpful. One of the things I found with between my uh, cheap cell phone and my car radio, when I wanted to play music out of my phone, the input to the radio just, I haven't met a car stereo yet that the auxiliary input to it had any guts it all and you'd have to turn the volume up on the radio so bad that if you hit the wrong button on the radio if you were on the auxiliary import and you went back over the radio the radio would blow you out the door so I decided yes knowing what I do know about electronics and amplifiers and things I built myself a cute little box that contained an amplifier where you plug the cord into your phone and the cord instead of going to your phone to the radio plugs into the box and we have a 20 to 1 amplifier so that when I at least use this on my car stereo the radio and my phone all come out at the same volume with the volume on the phone not having to be way up high to burn battery I can have the volume on the phone down around 2 or 3 out of 10 with my box, with my amplifier box. I can have the radio on like 12 or 14 and everything turns out to be all the same volume, which works out really nice. I then realized, hey look at that, I got about two thirds of the board left, so what do I do with it? Well, I've been working on making a 2 amp USB charger. Two of them, one on each side here. Um, I am not very good at engineering or designing some of these circuits. I do my best that I can with the knowledge that I have of being an electronic technician, not an engineer. I have never claimed to be an engineer and never will claim to be an engineer. The so I have put in two uh, regulators to get the 5 volts for the USB port to plug in my phone or any other uh, USB powered device. Um, the regulators are only good to 1 amp and a lot of devices these days will easily eat 2 amp. So they overheat and have some other troubles so in hunting the internet I found a buck circuit that's like a switching power supply, uh, really nice and small as you can see. I'll get you a close up picture of it here.
All right, and they're only like a dollar or something a piece. I think I paid like eight bucks for five of them. I haven't tried it out yet. This is a variable one. I can get a chip for it that is set to five volts, but I don't know about making my own circuit. It may end up being actually more expensive to build this out of my own circuit and actually try to make it work. Because this here, supposedly, I haven't turned it on yet, but being a commercially designed and built, it should actually work. I just have to dial it, dial it into 5 volts. And, oh yes, I can't forget that this is good to 2 amps. Uh, without an extra heat sink, with an extra heat sink, I can go to 3 amp. So that does solve a lot of my USB troubles. The other thing I've been doing, I found in the internet, was a cute little blue display. Uh, these are little voltmeters that you uh, power anything from zero, or you power them from three to 30 volts. They display in three digits, uh, zero to 30 volts. There, I did it turned out. I put the same plug on it to just test it out to see how it would work. It's actually working, working pretty good. With that, um, I can monitor. Instead of just having an idiot light in my car, I now actually have a real voltmeter. The problem is at night it's too bright, and they say they're not dimmable. But hey, what is the manufacturer now? I believe I can, um, a little bit of work and effort and some reverse engineering, I can get this. I can get this to dim. It just, just takes that, that thing. i got to reach out to the manufacturer. Maybe they might even break down and send me the schematic, which would be a nice thing. Um, other things that I'd like to, like to do is i got a current shunt so that I can measure the current off my alternator. Um, my uncle used to work in the elevator business, and he left me a bunch of 150-amp amp meters that require the external shunt to, to read. Uh, I put it on my battery charger, read um, 30 amp, because I had the battery charger on 30 amp, works pretty good. I'll wire it in there uh, sometime soon. The other thing is, is one company I worked for, I did a lot of temperature sensing with type K thermocouples. Uh, I'd like to build some stuff where I can monitor a bunch of temperatures and stuff in the car with the thermocouples. Here we are in the car. I got the voltmeter plugged into the cigarette lighter. The key's off right now. So of course the all oh, the cigarette lighter is off. So we turn the key on. And as you can see it's quite bright. Battery is doing good at 12 volts. And then we start the motor. It resets itself. And there we are on the alternator. It's about, that's about where I think I'm going to mount it. There, I just got to figure out, you know, voltage, current, uh, outside temp or some engine temp and then outside temp. I don't know, it's kind of underneath the radio there. Be kind of a nice, <laughs> have a whole bunch of maybe two, the, the volts and amps stacked. I don't know, we'll get that, we'll get that figured out in due time. But I first off, yeah, it's just too bright at night. I got to figure out how to dim it. All right, back to the, back to the regular video. All right, that's about where that is. Didn't want to bore you too long, or maybe you are interested in this stuff. If you are interested in the electronics or what I'm doing or would like some schematics of uh, my amplifier or something, uh, leave a comment below. Um, send me a message or whatever there through the comments and I'll get you a schematic out to uh, either my power supply or the amplifier if you uh, want to build it yourself. And as always, please like, subscribe, have any other co uh, comments or whatever. Um, please, with the comments, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, please. Because that's the way polite society should be.
Thanks for, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.